What's up everyone, Patrick here, welcome back. Moving on to the next word problem, still dealing with quadratic equations. So we're told a rectangular prism has a height of 20 centimeters and a length that is six centimeters more than the width. If the volume of the prism is 8,640 centimeters cubed, we have to find the dimensions of the prism. So let's start off with a diagram just so we can visually see what is happening. So if we have a rectangular prism like this, we're told that the height of the prism is 20 centimeters. So that's this right here. And then we're told that the length is six centimeters more than the width. So we're not told the actual values, but we're told how they relate. So what we could do, we can introduce a variable here and I'm going to let X equal whatever the width of this rectangular prism is going to be. So that's going to be this over here. That's going to be the width. And so what's the length going to be? Well, it's going to be six centimeters more than the width. So it's going to be X plus six like that. Right. And so these are the dimensions. We have a height of 20, a width of X centimeters, and then we have a length of X plus six centimeters. And then we're told the volume, is 8,640 centimeters cubed, we have to find the dimensions given that information. So notice that we can create an equation from that because we know in general the volume of a rectangular prism is what? Length times width times height like that. And so we could plug in all of these for the length, width, and height, and then we could plug in the 8,640 for the volume right here. Okay, so the length is x plus 6. I'm going to put these in a weird order just to match it up with this, and then I'll put it in a nicer order in the next line. So we'll have the length, we'll have the width, we'll have the height like that. Uh, so from here, what we want to do is solve this equation. Notice that we have an equation in terms of one variable, in terms of x we could solve. So to make this look a little nicer, what I'll do is I'll actually take the 20, the x, I'll combine those into 20x, and then I'll have x plus 6 over here. And then we've got the 8,640. Now, if you want to simplify this at this point, you can actually divide both sides by 20 if you want. That's going to bring down the size of the numbers that you're dealing with. So you could go divide by 20, divide by 20. I'm not going to go that route just because a lot of textbooks won't show that. But you can divide this by 20, divide this by 20. So you'd end up with x times x plus 6 equals whatever that value would be. And then from there, you can bring everything to one side, expand everything and solve, and you're going to get the same solutions that, uh, that we're going to get at the end. But I'm not going to do that. I'm going to keep everything as it is. And from here, I'll just expand. So I'll um, distribute the 20 inside, and then I'll bring the 8,640 over. So we'd end up with zero on this side. We'd have 20x squared plus 120x minus 8,640. And so if I bring this up here, so notice that now we have this quadratic equation. I'm going to put this on the left side instead just to make it look a little nicer. Basically just switch the sides like that. And so from here, what we can do is solve this quadratic equation and let's do it with factoring. So the first thing we could do is from this quadratic, notice we could take out a 20 from everything. And if we do, we'd end up with x squared plus 6x minus 8,640 divided by 20 would give us 432, like that, right? So this is the quadratic here that you would get if you took that route of dividing both sides by 20 at that point before, right? You'd end up with this quadratic equaling zero, right? So again, 
whatever, because we can't get a certain x value for just the 20, we're gonna get it after factoring this quadratic. So whether that 20 is in front or not, at this point is irrelevant, we're gonna get the same solutions. But keeping it over here, let's uh, factor this. And if you do factor this, I'm not gonna go through the steps of that. We've done tons of videos on factoring at this point. But this quadratic is going to factor into um, x plus 24, x minus 18. Like that. Right? 24 times negative 18 would give us negative 432. And then you'd have 24x minus 18x, which would give you that positive 6x right there. And so from here, we can get the solutions x plus 24 equals zero, x minus 18 is equal to zero. This is gonna be negative 24. This is gonna be x equals 18. Now, which of these solutions is admissible? Well, notice negative 24 is not because we can't have a negative 24 with. That's what we let x be. So in this, in this uh, abstract quadratic equation, that is one of the solutions, but when you uh, related to the actual word problem you're dealing with, it's not. So this negative 24 we would take out and then we have that x value of 18. So notice with that we'd have a width of 18 centimeters and then a length of 24 centimeters. And that ends up being the final answer. Those are the dimensions, 20 centimeters by 18 centimeters by 24 centimeters. And then if you wanna check it, if you would multiply all of these, you'd indeed end up getting that volume of uh, 8,640 centimeters cubed. Okay, so that's how you do it. You wanna take something like this, create an equation, solve for it, see which solutions actually work in terms of your word problem, and then you're done the question.